people watcher is with us again today i have missed him he hasn't been here for a couple of days and he's got another unusual story for us he always has please welcome ken minyard <laughs> Something unusual and different. I really, I really you, think so. What did I do? I don't know, but I like your jacket. Thank you. You look great. Isaac was talking uh, before you uh, broke away about uh, frustrations mm -hmm. in our society, and you're sure right. Remember the line in the uh, in the uh, movie, the Peter Finch line in Network? I'm madder in hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. Well, I venture to guess that uh, a lot of these people here today, and a lot of them out there, have had that feeling a lot lately about the frustrations that we're having that we really would like to be able to make a statement particularly about our country uh, and, and have it be heard but then you get to that point of saying but what can I do about it uh, and that's where you really I think run into trouble that's when people think they're powerless uh, to affect any kind of change or have any kind of influence on what's but you, you do know, get that feeling us. you sure do I get it I mean terrible frustration you see all of the candidates everybody talking all the time, and I haven't heard anybody say anything they're going to do about anything, and right. that, that's frustrating. Well, that's the secret when you're campaigning. You have to talk a lot and say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because Isn't that if the you truth? say something, you're going to trouble. But every uh, once in a while, that's what they do. You know. The people I admire, every once in a while, comes along a person who, who may not be well known, he may not be a celebrity, he's the average individual or group of individuals who can really say something and make it be heard. And such a story uh, I ran across in a Dallas uh, newspaper about three guys who were in the advertising business in Dallas, and they were sitting around over coffee one morning uh, discussing some of the problems that we have in our country and some of the bad rap that it's getting from certain quarters uh, around the world. And they said, geez, I would really like to do something about it. And they have done it. I don't want to tell them any more of the story. I want to let one of those three guys uh, tell it. His name is Jim Kirk from okay. Dallas, Texas. Shall we bring oh, him out? Sure. Jim, Thank come you. on out. Jim. The story, uh, you did something about it. You can do something about it? We're doing something about it. Like what? We decided that we, uh, uh, since we write and produce commercial music, that it might be our way of trying to write a, a commercial song that would be, that would express some of the feelings that I was hearing all across the country. I travel quite a bit around the country calling on advertising agencies, and everywhere I went, everybody was saying, you know, it's been 25 years since we've all pulled together. It's been 25 years since we've all the races, all the religions, all the people have started to pull together and started to talk like one. Uh, it's a sad thing that we've had so many negative things happen around the world that have caused us to pull together like that, but it yeah, started I mean, happening. Just winning the hockey, you know, winning oh, the gold medal fantastic. in hockey well, just pulled us off. Oh, no, no, no. Just... I mean, we're, we're like, I, I don't think we're ever get over the euphoria the whole country. I saw Tom Brokaw break out in tears. Sure. Uh, you but, know, but you know, Dinah, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, talking about just a couple of years ago, where Americans, you didn't feel like you could wear red, white, and blue that said USA on it. You didn't feel like you could walk up and go, USA. I mean, there was some kind of a negative yeah. connotation to that. And that's sad. And yes. so we felt like that what we were hearing all over the country was people saying just the opposite now. So uh, I've, I've always expressed myself through my music. I was encouraged by the people that I work with to, uh, to go out and, and write a song that would express that. And so we wrote a song called Voice of Freedom and then sat down and was in the studio the next day uh, uh, playing through it and, and at the piano doing a sample arrangement to it. And Roy and Patty Disney walked through, who own our company, and they had they got very excited about it and said, you know, we ought to, we ought to press that. We ought to release that because American people ought to hear that. We need a rallying tool. We need yeah. cheerleaders. We need people to help us express well, these emotions. How did you get to, well, how did you I, two get to each other? Yeah, I happened uh, to have a friend who is one of the triumvirate of uh, people who were uh, sitting around talking about this. His name is Pat Shaughnessy. And uh, he came over to my house uh, one day when he was in Los Angeles, and not for any reason other than he wanted me to hear it. Not, he didn't have any designs on it. didn't know where it was going to be uh, going. And I heard it and flipped out over it, and uh, uh, my family did. And I played it on my radio show. You had a disc jockey in Dallas, though, primarily, who was playing it on his uh, show quite a bit. And we had hundreds of calls. They probably had thousands uh, in Dallas. Capitol Records came along and said, you know, we really would like to do something with that, too. 
Bottom line is, Capitol Records now has put out all of the proceeds from this, uh, from this record are going to the American, American Red, Red Cross. Red Cross. Uh, it is uh, on Billboard in the Hot 100 with a bullet. Wow, we <laughs> and, sure is. And it's a family venture. When you say you write commercial music, I think we ought to clarify that you write commercials, jingles, commercials, that yeah. sort of thing. He's right. never Not written, records. You've never written a song uh, that has been uh, released uh, for play like this. Well, what? I assume it's of a positive one? nature, what you've done. I mean, the, the, yeah. the song, it, it expresses some positive it's feelings about the country. It, it is only positive. Right. You know, let, me, been... let me just uh, comment to that for a second, because I'll tell you something. I have a real aversion when somebody says they've written a patriotic song, not because I'm against patriotism, because generally what it is, it is down with the hippie freaks, or uh, uh, it's corny, or it's something that is really a negative connotation. And you really hit on it, Fernando. The whole thing about this is it hasn't anything to do with being conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat. It is really something that can be a unifying influence like that hockey game. Remember that, remember that, that the record that that Canadian fellow did? Oh, Can, yeah. yeah. He, he spoke the record. When he suddenly got yeah. fed up, everybody was complaining about the United yeah. States all over the world, and we were supporting half of the world. It was a marvelous, really, record because, you know, he was saying a lot of things that I, we wanted somebody to say. He did, and he's a Canadian. That's right. But, yeah. Are we going to get to hear it? You bet. I'm it's dying to hear it. Jim and uh, some of uh, his... My niece, niece Katie, who sings the lead in it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, some Betsy, kids. Betsy, another niece of mine, a bunch of kids who are friends of ours. Some kids... These are, uh, ju young these are just people. Uh-huh. That's, that's all we are. No professionals. <laughs> Nobody knows. Just folk, people like us. Well, are they standing backstage waiting yeah. to, to sing now? They Why don't you go join your family, uh, Jim, and uh, yeah, we'll get okay. it. Yeah. Okay. I might point out that this You haven't record, told me the name of the song. It's called Voice of Freedom. It's by Jim Kirk and the Voice TM, of Freedom. The TM I'm... Singers. His company is, the, is called TM Productions in Dallas. All the proceeds go to the uh, Red Cross. Red Cross. And if you listen closely to the lyrics and uh, what they are really saying, I really think it might uh, serve as an inspiration. Jim Kirk and the Voice of Freedom with Young Voice. <laughs> It's not, it's the best thing to 
the snark. It's the best thing in this world.